What's up? In this video, we are talking about the coronavirus and then we're talking about its effect on the eye. What's up guys, my name is Zach. I'm a second year ophthalmology resident and medical doctor and my background is actually in microbiology. I majored in it in college and it's the study of everything from bacteria to fungi to parasites to viruses. So let's talk about coronavirus, what it is, where it came from, why is it so scary, and then can it affect the eye? So the coronaviruses are actually a family of viruses it's the same family of viruses that caused the 2003 SARS virus in China and the MERS virus from the Middle East. All those are the same type of beta coronavirus. What's interesting about these viruses is that they are zoonotic viruses. They start in animals, then they make their way to humans. A lot of viruses have done this. It's thought that the HIV virus probably originated in chimpanzees and made its way into humans. And other viruses like the swine flu, bird flu, same thing. The genetic mutations that these viruses undergo to be able to switch species is really interesting, something we are not going to talk about, but just know that that is essentially what's happening with this virus. It's making a jump from animals to humans. The original SARS virus in 2003 probably went from civet cats to humans, and the MERS virus probably went from camels to humans. Now, this current coronavirus outbreak may have made its way from bats to humans. Now, the virus that we are talking about is the SARS-CoV-2 virus, and it is causing the COVID-19 disease. So just like HIV is the virus, AIDS is the disease, we have the SARS-CoV-2 virus, and COVID-19 is the disease that it is causing. This virus originated in the Wuhan capital of Hubei province of China. That is the epicenter of the virus, or where it started at patient zero. And a lot of the original patients that were exposed in this province had exposure to an outdoor live animal market and that is probably where the jump was made from there it has made its spread to other countries and made its way to the united states the way this virus is transmitted from person to person is primarily through respiratory droplets that means when someone coughs or sneezes it has the virus the virus is aerosolized kind of like a lysol spray it's aerosolized out other people breathe it in or it may come into contact with mucous membranes like the eye or nose, the mucous membranes in the nose. And it's for this reason that the CDC recommends the proper PPE when coming into contact with a patient with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And that includes a gown, gloves, the N95 mask, and also eye protection. Now the symptoms of the disease are respiratory symptoms primarily. You can have things like fever, cough, shortness of breath. Those would be the type of symptoms that you might have. And the virus primarily does its damage through the respiratory system. The name itself, SARS, is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, and that is how it causes this disease. Now, most people are not gonna have the severe form of the disease. Most people are gonna have a milder form of the disease and maybe even be asymptomatic, and that is likely how this coronavirus has been so successful in propagating itself and spreading itself. Now, coronaviruses can cause upwards of 10 or more percent of just the common cold, but this coronavirus in particular is a lot more contagious and a lot more virulent than the typical coronavirus. What does that mean? It means it's more likely to spread between people, it's more contagious, and the virulence of it is higher, meaning that it is more likely to cause severe disease when it is contracted. That being said, most people who do contract it will not develop the severe form of the disease that can be lethal. And that is also likely a reason that this virus is so successful in spreading is that healthier people who contract it may only have cold-like symptoms and then not even know they have it and spread it to people more easily and then people that are more susceptible, people with pre-existing conditions or immunosuppression can possibly develop a more severe form of the disease that can be lethal. So can this virus actually infect the eye and what effects does it have if it does? So information from the American Academy of Ophthalmology website that is updated as of March 7th actually suggests that the virus can cause a conjunctivitis. There are case reports of the virus causing conjunctivitis and even being found in the ocular secretions of patients known to have the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So what does that mean? It means that the virus could possibly be contracted by contact with the ocular secretions of a patient with the virus or even be contracted from the virus coming into contact with the mucous membranes and the conjunctiva of the eye. The effect of the virus on the eye right now is believed just to be a conjunctivitis. That's similar to pink eye, which is normally caused by a different virus, oftentimes an adenovirus. Uh, it can cause a similar type of picture with red, watery eye. So if you look at the white of someone's eye, you may not have realized that there's actually a very clear, thin membrane sort of material that lies over that part. That is the conjunctiva. So it's this thin, clear kind of skin of the eye 
that provides another barrier layer of protection. But when you have a conjunctivitis, it gets red and inflamed. And so that is essentially what's happening with the coronavirus. Now, a lot of viruses can actually do a lot more damage to the eye than this. Things like the herpes virus, whether it be herpes simplex or herpes zoster viruses, can really wreak havoc on the eye. They can cause uveitis, they can cause severe epithelial keratitis and corneal disease, and they can even be completely devastating to the eye, causing things like acute retinal necrosis or progressive outer retinal necrosis. I've seen people lose their eye from herpes virus infections. Another virus that can have severe effects on the eye is the CMV virus, the cytomegalovirus that is seen in patients with AIDS with severe immunosuppression. Luckily, the coronavirus does not cause these severe infections that we know of. It just causes a conjunctivitis as of our most recent updated information. So for medical professionals and ophthalmologists, it is very important to identify these patients that may come into clinic with these respiratory symptoms of cough, shortness of breath, maybe a fever, and any history of recent travel to these countries that are known to have had the SARS-CoV-2 virus, places like Iran, Italy, Japan, or China, it's important to consider that those patients could have this virus. And then if you see a conjunctivitis in those patients, it could potentially actually be from the virus itself. So in summary, this virus is scary to people because it is more contagious and it's more virulent. It is also very good at being spread in people that are healthier. And then it can find its way into somebody that's not as healthy and really cause severe disease, but it can affect the eye and cause a conjunctivitis right now. We think that's all that it can do in the eye. Uh, we don't know of anything else at this point that it can do to the eye. If you're a healthcare provider or been around anybody that's sick, just make sure to wash your hands, try not to touch your face, try not to touch your nose, your mouth, or your eyes to avoid transmission of these viruses, and that goes for the coronavirus and also any other virus. Just make sure that you're getting up-to-date information from reputable sources like the CDC, like the WHO, and like the AAO, American Academy of Ophthalmology websites, that provide up-to-date, well-informed medical information and education that's where i got this information and that i've passed along to you it's important to be careful if you're just following mainstream media these aren't medical professionals that are commentating on these things and oftentimes these mass media sites can be driven by things like politics or ratings and it's just important to evaluate the source that this information is coming from i hope this was helpful and informative if you guys have questions leave them down in the comments below and i'll try to answer them my name is zach with dr eyeball md and i'll see you guys in the next one